Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the channel of Infinity Engineering Academy. Today, we are going to talk about time management. Many students from Infinity Academy and other, they call us and inquire about how to manage their time while they are preparing for the competitive exams. So my name is Ruturaj. I'm logging from Nagpur branch of Infinity Academy. And we are going to talk today about the time management for the competitive exams. So have you ever thought while making your preparation for the competitive exams that you have a fear that will we be able to complete our process or the com complete our study in the stipulated time? Some of the students say that they also have a fear that they don't know how many hours should they study in reality? What should be the schedule? What should be the sequence of the subjects? What should be the strategy so that they are able to complete the revision as well as syllabus and go to the exam with the confidence. So many questions like this based on the research and the studies that we have seen, we have tried to make a very short and comprehensive session which will give you a few tips about the competitive exam preparedness with respect to its time management. So let's go through it. Whenever a person or a student is trying to prepare for uh, any competitive exams, we should kind of treat it like a project which will have a start date and a finish date. When we say start date and a finish date and a student is trying to attempt for an exam, he should first analyze what target exam he is going to appear for and how much is the duration left for him. Based on it, the targets can then be set up on yearly basis, monthly basis and a daily basis. So assuming the engineering students are appearing for MPSC, MES examination and they are going to set up themselves and prepare themselves for the exam for the next year. So we will take an hypothetical example where we will see a student has got one year's preparation time. So for the first step he should understand is which exam is he going to appear for? What is the duration remaining with him? And based on that, his targets will be on three segments, as I said, yearly, monthly and daily. With this notice, starting from point zero to the final one year of the examination, arbitrarily, it is understood that the last two to three months should be part of your revision. And the first half or the first major section which comprises of 80% of your time should be your syllabus preparation time. This is typically how you will divide your front line of one year. So as I said, we have taken an example of MPSC MES. This is the first example. Along with this, we are going to add one more situation where we will say the student is going to study for full time. So if a student is studying for full time, preparing himself only for the competitive examination and if he is going to prepare almost for a year, this is a typical timeline which should be uh, looked at and can be followed. Out of which 100% 2 to 3 months time should be given only for your revision. And then the rest of the or the earlier part which is for approximately 8 to 9 months is your preparation time. Clear? So now if we break this further, uh, in those 8 months, if we break them into a monthly target, you will have a de defined intervals for the content. Now many a times it has happened when a person or a student asks for an assistance on the timetable and we, he tries to put up a timetable, he brings up something which is time bound and he tries to work accordingly. But believe us, that is not the way that will actually give you a success. The timetable means something which should be realistic, something which should be human to be implemented, and it should also in a part of something which is flexible and it should be content driven, not time, time driven. We want a person to set up a target or set up a timetable based on the content, not on the time. So when I said on the, in the earlier slide that the yearly target has to be set based on the examination that he is going to appear for, first of, before this, one step a person can do is he will find out all the resources 
and the material where he should study from. So based on the resources, which is the content of the examination, he can further go down to these three steps, which we are going to talk about. So whether be it a yearly, monthly or a weekly target, a student should ascertain the content that he has to cover for. So when we talked about first eight months and we broke it down to a particular month, you will end up having typically four weeks. So in particular week, the content has to be equally distributed. Now, what is this content and what are these subjects? Many a times it happens that uh, it is a tendency that a student has a liking to certain subjects, which he says those are his easy win subjects or these are the liking subjects. On the other hand, he says there are certain subjects which he is particularly not very happy with or not very friendly with and those kind of subjects are day two subjects for him. But in the first eight months, if he distributes his liking subjects at the end, beginning and keep the non liking subjects at the end, there are high chances that the energy level which a student will have in initial months will gradually go down and then your preparation will slow down. That's not we should do. So while selecting the subjects or the content, you can stagger and make a mix of liking versus non-liking subjects. Like liking and unliking is something which I'm just using as a um, notation, but that's not the real thing. Like there are certain subjects which you are very easy to go with, some subjects which are slightly difficult. So you should have a balance between them, which subject to select and then prepare your timeline for the eight months. So when it comes to the monthly preparation, Again, the same formula will work. In for, for example, we will take again as we have given an example of MES, some student would be comfortable in structure subjects. And some students will be comfortable in general subjects. Let's for example, say concrete technology. So a student A, if he has a liking to structure subjects and not very liking for the general subjects, can prefer to go with stru structural subjects for the initial timeline and the difficult ones or non-liking at the end. This will definitely slow down his preparation. So what we are recommending is they should have a balance of both types of subject and hence the content should be divided. So when we go to a monthly task, When we talk about a monthly task, typically a student attempts and says that he should uh, study for the entire month and then he should study for all the weekdays and weekends. But that's not what should we be recommending. There should always be certain time for your fitness. There should always be a time for your recreation so that at the end of a week or at the end of the fourth night or at the end of the month, you are again a refresh to attempt for the next preparation. So let's say a student starts from the zeroth day and he goes from day one to day seven. So within first six days, the content can be covered and the seventh day can be kept for your regular routine, which can be a time for your family, which can be a time for your own fitness. It can be time for your own mental peace and recreation. But it doesn't really necessarily mean that this typical uh, schedule should be followed till the end of the examination. A person knows what kind of examination he is preparing for, what kind of timetable he can abide to. So likewise, you can split your content and your weekly split up. The most important uh, entity which comes in is when you start managing your things on a daily basis. This is where the most uh, critical part comes in. So from the researches and the studies, we see that a person saying that if he is going to work and um, appear and study for 12 hours a day, effectively the 12 hours will average it out to 10 hours only. So how this 10 hours are averaged out? We consider the 12 hours study for the period of a month or a quarter. And then if you average it out, the effective study comes up to 10 hours only. So we have taken another example to split how this 10 hours should be taken into consideration. Now we all know that MES is going to be descriptive in the next year. So your daily planning can also be from that point of point of view. 
we have taken a typical example of 10 hours or 12 hours per se in which we say 1 hour and 30 minutes can be given to current affairs. This will include your newspaper reading also. Half an hour should be given to your writing practice. Now writing practice means what? Like you would take certain topic and you would write something on that. Sometimes you should just practice it to keep your speed up. Not necessary that you only need certain relevant topic and then you should write on what you have read for. Not like that. But at least you have to make sure that half an hour is what you are um, giving yourself for the writing practice. Two hours is something which you will use for the revision. So in a particular day when we talk about 12 hours or 10 hours study, two hours will be part of your revision and six hours will be part of a new content that you are going to read. So for an example, a person starts reading for the day one and he ta takes any particular topic. So initially he should start reading the new data for four to five hours or to that matter six hours. At the end of the day, he should ensure that he should revise that data at least for a couple of hours. So what will happen is he will memorize what he has read for. At the end of the week, he can again invest his time on the weekend to revise what he has read over a week. So that will be a second part of the revision of that particular content. In a month, at the end of the month, he should again revise it once or he can also revise that third part in those last two months of the year. So there are various studies of the human psychology which says that if you have read or practiced certain things for th uh, three times, which is called the rule of three, there are very highly chances that the things will get memorized to you fast. So at least they will get memorized to a point that in an exam, if the certain question is asked about it, you will be able to write. So in that context, if you are able to revise those things, what you have read on the same day or even to that matter on the next day, revise it again at the end of the week and revise it in your last portion of your two months of your year, there are fair chances that you will remember it. Again, we said before that the flexible schedule should be implemented on a, like you are not a robot, you should implement the uh, schedule something on a human grounds. Don't make yourself very rigid so that uh, you will not be able to spend time for your recreation also. All that the mental health and the physical health is also important. So uh, if we plan your day accordingly while giving a, a proper time for your current events, giving a proper time for the revision sessions, giving the content uh, time for your uh, new content and also giving certain time for the revision and writing practice, uh, we think that you will have a constructive approach on your daily program. So at the end of the exams or when you come close to the exam, you will be confident stating that when I had started my preparation, I had a methodical approach and we have done certain things as, as, the, as per the uh, very constructive steps. That will give you a confidence to appear for your exam and naturally your results will be high. So this was something that we recommend uh, not and this is something that we said many students have tried and it has helped them to give a efficient timetable. We will come again with the further uh, sessions like this with more content on this. Uh, do give us your comments and your feedbacks. We will certainly be happy to help them. Thank you very much.